Welcome, Rob. If you've just come in, everybody, um, we're just saying drop your intros into the chat and then we'll get started because we got a lot to pack in here for the next 45 minutes. So with that, everybody, this is a lesson jam. So this is a chance to have all of us open up the world. You've got two of the lesson creators and world um, co-designers here with you. Going to tell you how they designed it, how to do it with your kids, and just the amazing content. It's really, really great. So I'll have them introduce themselves. Um, if you don't have it yet, download it um, so you can walk through. You do have a choice though tonight. You can either watch and learn and sit back and soak it in or play and learn because it is a lesson jam. So we encourage to do the latter if you have Minecraft open. Um, we'll show you how to go get to the Good Trouble lesson and open it. Um, and then just walk along and try to play it yourself and envision what it might look like in your classroom if you want to use it this month for Black History Month. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead um, after the walkthrough, there's Q&A anytime everybody put questions in the chat, whether it's about the content or logistics on how you might teach this or Minecraft issues. Um, but with that, I'd love to introduce you all to Dr. Ford and Dr. Rachel. Hello, ladies. Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, you're muted, Lisa. I know. I had to take care of my background. <laughs> well, let us okay. know. Tell us how you, what y'all do in your day job, and then what brought you to building this amazing lesson for Minecraft. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Felisa Ford. I'm a digital learning specialist with Atlanta Public Schools, and I am happy to be with you this evening. And I have my counterpart, my other partner in crime, co-worker, collaborator, all of the above. <laughs> Cubicle mate. <laughs> all right. of the above. I'm Natasha Rachel. I'm also a digital learning specialist for Atlanta Public Schools, and we are just so excited to share this amazing passion project that we've been working on, seems like for a long time, but I guess it has been a while. It was um, a while. <laughs> yeah. So I know Felice is going to share with you how we got started. So, right, just to give you a little background on these lessons and how we got started, it all came about at the height of the social justice unrest that was taking place across the nation, across the world, especially with the incident with George Floyd, and there was so much going on with the protests and the Black Lives Matter movement. So, uh, members of the Minecraft team reached out and wanted to see if we could collaborate on coming up with a world or a lesson really to kind of bring the social justice piece into Minecraft. And so I, of course I got with Natasha and we got with Ken so that we could come up because we really wanted to do it justice and we so that we could come up with a world that students could really connect with in a world that they're already comfortable with in a manner that they're comfortable with through Minecraft. And so we came up with good trouble. And the reason we came up with that is because we are really close to Congressman John Lewis. We, Atlanta Public Schools sits in the middle of the 5th Congressional District, which is his district. He is my representative. So it was very common to see him in our district. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing. And Natasha, you can keep talking because I want to just give you some background on the, con the connection that we have with Congressman Lewis. Absolutely. So, yeah, so as you're pulling that up, um, like Felisa said, we have a school named after Congressman John Lewis here in Atlanta Public Schools. Oh, there's a picture. <laughs> right. right. So it was not uncommon for us to just for him to be in the midst of things that we did. And even with our Minecraft student ambassadors, this was the last time that we saw him face to face. This was at our back to school bash in 2019. So. And I'm going to go through a couple of more because I want to get to the real connection that we had. I had students that would participate yearly when I was the K-12 social status coordinator. I had students that would participate in the anniversary of Bloody Sunday. And this was one of the students that would go on this trip with me. And we would literally march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge with Congressman Lewis and other delegates from uh, Congress that he would bring down. And so these were, and it was just, we could have just get close to him and touch him and have conversation. So it was great that we could expose students. And this is my daughter. She would make those trips with me every year. And this was in 2014. So we were doing this for a long time. And this is the bridge. We would actually march across the bridge, just commemorating 
bloody Sunday and his experience across the bridge. And so that's why we have all of these personal connections with Minecraft. Yeah. So I will stop there and let me I'm so get glad to share, that. share yeah. in this world. He um super personable. Um, and so we just definitely have that that connection with him. And it was as you'll see as we go through the lessons or through the world, he is your tour guide through the good trouble world. And so we he takes you through eight different um pieces of good trouble, if you will, eight different uh phases of good trouble where you're introduced to um Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., you're introduced to uh, Emmeline Pankhurst and Malala. But for the purposes of today, we're going to focus on our lessons that we introduced for Black History Month. Um, so the Black Lives Matter lesson, um, the Dr. Martin Luther King lesson, and the Civil Rights Movement lesson. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But there's eight lessons in this world and then two additional lessons um that we will talk about as well so um john lewis is your tour guide he takes you through he talks all about good trouble the importance of good trouble and what we really wanted to convey is that all of these people that your students will interact with are all regular people that put their their pants on one foot at a time just like everybody else but they made the decision to stand up one day for what they believed was right and as a result they caused some good trouble in the world that made change so all right, and so for those of you who may not be as familiar with Minecraft, there are two ways that you can get to these worlds. You can actually get to it from the Minecraft site, but you can also get to these lessons via the, the game itself, via the library. So when I view the library, I'm gonna come down to lessons, and then I'm gonna scroll down to the equity and inclusion. And that's where you will see the good trouble world. And we go ahead and click on lessons in good trouble. This will take you to the actual world. So we're going to create this world. And what we recommend as a, an educator, do not let your students just go into this world without you having conversations around this content, because there is a lot of deep content in here and we've put in a lot of resources that will help you support you with the teaching of this content. So we've broken these lessons down into teacher preparation along with whole class instruction, small breakout groups, and then getting into actually building in Minecraft. So we just want to make sure that we share that. And you know what I forgot to normally I go in and I just set everything to creative mode. I didn't do that this time. I used to go into the settings to do that. But it, it brings you into the lobby when you come into the world. And so I recommend that you really just have students take their time and just explore the lobby. There are additional resources that are here, but you will also see a lot of different NPCs. And these NPCs will take you to their portions of the world. Also in here, there is an activity guide. So this gives you just really an overview of this world, Congressman John Lewis and how he stood up for social injustice and all of that. And you can export that if you choose. Um, make sure that your students know that they need to always look for these resources that are built right into the world and click on the NPCs because they are sharing important information. And so as we say, Congressman Lewis is our guide. So he just gives you an over, introduces himself and tells you that he's devoted to his life of achieving equal rights. And then you can go ahead and get started. But for the sake of what we're doing, we're focusing on civil rights. And so we, and you see, we have um, the apartheid movement, we have Malala and we have the Black Lives Movement. So we're gonna enter the civil rights world. So I would just interact with uh, Dr. King, and this is focusing on the 1950s and 60s in the US, the civil rights movement at this moment in time. And of course, we have our immersive reader for our students who may need additional support, so that's built in. So this brings us right into the heart of the civil rights era. And we are met once again by Congressman Lewis and Dr. King. And so make sure that your students interact with the NPCs that are there because they're giving them background information. Let uh, Congressman Lewis is letting you know that Dr. King was his friend and mentor and that um, he embodied these ideas of causing good trouble and nonviolent protest. And then Dr. King 
is giving you some information about his friend, his dear friend John, and their their connection in from Atlanta, the marches, the march on Washington. We've embedded a lot of external resources throughout these worlds and these lessons to give students to just give them a deeper understanding of the content. So this takes you to the I have a dream speech and just more information on his life. Remind students as they go through this world, the yellow beacons, those are activities. Mm -hmm. And the green beacons are just like guideposts that will just keep them on the right track. So we have an activity here. So I am going to click on this. And this is my book and quill. And just to give you a little background about this world, students are taking on the role of an investi investigative reporter or a journalist or a historian. You know, I had to bring in my background of social studies. <laughs> so they are bringing in, they need to interact with Dr. King to see what's going on. So our first stop here in the civil rights world, oh, let me go back. I hate I even showed that. I'm gonna go back <laughs> because I want you to see, let me go back. I want you to see the buildings too, because we were very deliberate in making sure that the the scenery was a replica of the environment at that time. And so as you see this building above this building, there is a W. Can anyone tell me what this W is for and what you think this building is that we're about to enter? Please and please come off mute. <laughs> Just think we're in the 1960s, we're in the South and there's a W above this building. I'll give you a hint. We're in Greensboro. <laughs> I'm coming from Canada with this, but is that a representation of who can and cannot come into that building? You know what? That is close. This is a replica of a Woolworths drugstore, and Woolworths often had lunch counters. So this is going to be a replica of a lunch counter sit in or a protest. And as we enter in here, we see that these are the Greensboro Four. And what we want students to do is to, and I need to go ahead and get my camera. Got, oh my goodness, I didn't make this creative, so I don't know if I'll be able to, oh my goodness, I forgot to make it creative. If I was in creative mode, I would just be able to get my camera. We want students to take pictures, so make sure your students are in creative mode and not in survival or adventure mode because they're supposed to take pictures throughout to document their investigation and come up with a report in their book and quill. So they would be taking pictures throughout this world so and really, even take really quick before you keep going. So remember okay. earlier, Felisa said um, she made the point about not having your students just jump right into the world without doing the pre work. That's super important in the lesson plans and we're going to go through them and we're going to go through one in just a little while once we go through um, the world here. There's so much information in those lesson plans. So even if you're not familiar, so for example, my teacher from Canada um, that just um, commented just then, even if you're not familiar with this particular situation, we've given you so many resources and videos and links to um, articles and YouTube videos that will get you more familiar with the content so that once your students, once you expose your students to the content, you're then able to, you're then able to release them into the Minecraft world so that it, it's more familiar to them. Um, so we've given you all of the pre-work, we've given you the resources, and then this is kind of the next step. Okay, so now we move from Greensboro and we're at a bus stop. So who do you think we're getting ready to interact with momentarily? We're still in the South, we're still in the civil rights era. Yeah. Rose 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 yeah, absolutely. And let me go down here to show you before I get on this bus, I think it's down here. We wanted everything to, we wanted students to really be able to experience what life was like and what was going on because now we're in the Jim Crow era. And so this is a replica of a water fountain, whites only drinking fountain. But we get into all of that prior to students going into this world because we need know that students would need background knowledge on a lot of this. And so we wanted to make sure that they had that. And so now I see Congressman Lewis and here he introduces us to Rosa Park and the Montgomery bus boycott and all of that. And so here we meet Rosa Parks herself. 
And then we have uh, extensions to information about her life and the Montgomery bus boycott. So this is just detailed information. And just know that we're going through pretty fast, but your students will have time to explore this. I'm gonna go on and exit this bus. And on the street, you'll notice that there's arrows. So sometimes even us, as we were going through, we were like, which way are we going? Just follow the arrows on the street. Follow the arrows, right. You will not get lost. All right, so this, now we're coming into a crowd of protesters and we see the bridge. So we're leaving Montgomery and we're headed to Selma and we see protesters along. So this is very important. One thing we wanted to make sure we are approaching the Edmund Pettus Bridge, we wanted to make sure that we captured those defining moments of these social justice movements. So we're getting ready to meet young John Lewis, which is very important. And as Natasha stated earlier, this was one of our um, really sticking points. The engineers were so amazing, guys, and I can't even tell you did our vision come to life. We would describe what we wanted. We would show pictures of what had to be in here and they made it happen. So we see that we're coming up on a march and we are coming up on the NPC of young John Lewis. And Natasha, you can describe what he's wearing. Yes, so as you have interacted with John Lewis previously, he's been in the suit, right? So this this depiction of him here in this tan color trench coat and if Felisa, she'll kind of pan around behind him. He also has on a backpack. And if you've ever seen the images of John Lewis on Bloody Sunday coming across that bridge where he's being beaten by the police officers um, and does, I believe he suffers just a slight concussion as well. Yes, yes, yes. Um, he is wearing that tan color trench coat and he's wearing a backpack and inside of that backpack he carried two apples two oranges a toothbrush a tube of toothpaste and two books and if you've ever heard any of his speeches where he references that day he talks about that he knew he was going to go to jail that day as a result of marching across this bridge and that he wanted to make sure that he was able to have something to eat that he was able to brush his teeth and that he had something to read while he was in jail and so when we were building working with the engineers to build this world. We knew that he was in the suit the whole way through, but Felisa and I and Ken, we were just like, please, 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 can we please have him in the tan color trench coat with the backpack? Like, we'll we'll give up anything else, but can we please, please, please. It was so important to us if we could have him depicted in this moment at the end of this bridge with that tan trench coat on. And they made him here. Exactly, and here are additional external resources that goes deeper into his role in Selma and the impact that Selma had on the civil rights movement and how this was a defining moment as well. And, and so once we- even has hair and he has hair here as well. So right. all the other NPCs, he's bald, but here he is and he's uh, he's got hair. <laughs> they did a great job with that. And we see here after they, come across the bridge, they are met by the German shepherds and of course the um, state troopers who were there waiting for them. And it was important that they made sure that the dogs were representative of German shepherds because those were the types of dogs that were used during that time on the protesters or the marchers. And so when students come out of the civil rights era, they can click on Congressman Lewis again. And one thing you need to know about this world, it could be linear or you can just focus on one segment of the world. You don't have to go through everything. So after we finish this world, you can either proceed on foot to go through a fast travel through or go back to the lobby. So we're gonna go back to the lobby at this moment. And are there any questions so far? Any thoughts how you can use this with your students? Any questions you have for us? So if Felisa were to continue going forward, well, she's it's already clicked out, but if she would have continued going forward, I believe she would have ended up in India and the next part of that lesson would have been with Gandhi. And so it's all connected. So you could go through each of, you could just continue going through and you would end up kind of in a circle back at Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter. Um, but here in the lobbies, it's great when you're able to come back to the lobby. So you can focus just on one piece of the lesson as you need to at like one piece at a time. Right, so now let's visit Black Lives Matter because that is perfect for black history as well. So this is now the USA 2020, and this is all about um, 
what's going on in the Black Lives Matter movement. So we're going to go there to see what's taking place. So when we click here, we are met once again by Congressman Lewis, and he explains that he'd like to teach us about good trouble and introduce us to some leaders through history that have built good trouble. But here we're going to, this is the end, I'm sorry. We're going to, we're at Black Lives Matter. So we enter really at the end of Black Lives Matter Plaza. So we're going to keep going past him. We're going to go past him and we see that we are, and I want to go up higher so that you can see. Oh, gosh, I didn't put it in creative, so. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, somebody help me. How can I fly in adventure if I'm not in creative? It's not doing the space to let me fly. Cole. Okay. What'd you say? I was saying Cole. Cole is on, our designer who helped with this role. I was wondering, he's a Minecraft guru. I was wondering if he could come off mute and tell us if there's an easy fix. Uh, oh, oh, I hate I didn't it, put it in creative. It's your, it's your, did you, you can try uh, running the command uh, slash game mode space C, <laughs> but you, com the commands are probably disabled. Yeah, I won't worry about it. So just imagine, guys, that I was, I'm in creative mode and, and I'm flying a, Go ahead. Uh, oh, I was just going to mention that there is a picture of the aerial view in the lobby as well. So right, right. I, I, yeah. Thank you, Cole. <laughs> just remember that. Don't do like I did. Go make sure you go in and put it in the correct mode that you want so that you can really <laughs> see, get an aerial view of Black Lives Matter Plaza. So when they interact with Congressman Lewis, he's going to talk about um, how he was arrested dozens of times fighting for the rights of freedom for others. And then we can see here the different signs and make sure that your students take a moment to really see what the signs say, because this was so important to us. We wanted to make sure that um, there were replications of the signs that were actually from the different movements, Black Lives Matter movements from the summer. So that was important and they were talking about say their names. All of this was a part of these signs that we saw. Say her name, all of that. And I'm just going to go through them and keep going. And when you get to this world, students are going to actually create graffiti art. And we're going to find out that graffiti art was really big in the Black Lives Matter movement as a way for protesters to express themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is where you will meet I think on down, you'll meet the founders of the Black Lives Matter movement. They'll give you information about the Black Lives Matter movement right here. I believe this may be it. So they just need to make sure that they're clicking on all of the NPCs. All, all of the NPCs, right. So this, and let me just give you the back story of this, guys. We had to literally work with the uh, lawyers from Microsoft and we had to get, and I say we, we didn't do that, but Microsoft and the Minecraft team did. They got in contact with all of the different groups and entities that are represented in this world. They had to get in contact with them or their spokesperson. So to get approval, they got in contact with the Black Lives Matter people with um, the uh, John Lewis estate, Malala. So this was really intensive so that we could get this right. So the Black Lives Matter movement was created as a result in 2013, as a result of the acquittal of the person who killed teenager Trayvon Martin. So this takes you on to that. And because we know the Black Lives Matter movement is really, it could be controversial for some people. We have an FAQ that will help you with teaching that or for your students. And Congressman Lewis tells you how it got started and who were the founders of the Black Lives Matter movement. But we have tons of resources for you so that you can share that. And I'm just going on through. And this is the, where the street art, street art is located, where they would do their build. And here we see our activity. And this is where students could get the resources they need to create their street art. And it could be anything that just represents what's going on or their thoughts about the Black Lives Matter movement. But then, and then, of course, they would take a picture and all of that. And Congressman Lewis tells them, let's see, oh yeah, he tells them about how street art was important to the protesters and expressing themselves and honoring the victims of this violence. 
And Natasha, look, you can do this part because I know you love telling this story. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm the storyteller. So right. if you'll notice at the end of the street there, right beyond that green beacon there, it looks like that that white building with the black lines on it. That's actually a depiction of a book. And so mm -hmm. John That's Lewis, open. when he, there's an open book. Yeah. So when he tells um, stories, he always talks about when he was, I believe, in the third or fourth grade, he went to the library in Alabama to try and get a library card. And the librarian told him that he could not get a library card because library cards were for whites only. And so he always, whenever he would come and speak to our students in Atlanta or whenever he speaks to students, period, he, was, he would always tell them the importance of reading. He would always tell students to read, mm -hmm. read, read. And so it was very important that we had books represented here in the world. And if you'll notice on the streets, kind of, um, if Felisa, if you back up just a little bit right uh -huh. there. Yeah. So, sides of that book there's actually that brown building there is actually the spine of one of his books and on the other side of the street is another spine of one of his other books so right. um it was just important to us to have his books represented because he was denied the gift of reading for so long that it became a passion of his and that his words were actually printed into books that we had those represented here as well all right, so I am going to try to move as fast as I can to get out here to get started. Are there any questions, guys? Yeah, we had a question here. The street art one is really fun. Rob was talking about the logistics of small groups. Susie mentioned this is easy to, you know, have all your students just join individually on their device, but it could also be fun for groups of four to five. How have you ladies seen it um, best implemented so far? So do have uh, when we get to and this is a good time to actually i guess go to the lesson mm -hmm. but in the actual lesson we do have small group activity i may have to pull it up let me see we do have um small group activities for all of these lessons whole group and small group activity and give me a minute I'm, i should have had it pulled up already so that you could see how these lessons are actually broken down. And like we said at the beginning, we strongly recommend that you that you print out the full lesson so that you can see all of the parts of the lesson because when you're uploading these lessons, you can't get everything into the little script. So we recommend you print the entire lesson that has the full links, the directions, and everything that's needed for you as a teacher to see how you can implement this. We make suggestions. Um, as so far as your students into the worlds, um, it is they were designed to just have the one student in the world. Um, so they would be in there individually. So if you wanted to put them in groups into the worlds, I wouldn't do, like you said, more than four or five. Right. I would very small. I wouldn't drop your whole class of 32 kids into one, into that one world. Right. And I think we had um, <laughs> roles for them if you put them into groups. Uh, so this was, this is what the lesson looks like, but there are full lessons. There is the, the full lesson in here. So we have the entire teacher preparation piece. But if we went to the full lesson, you could see how we give time, how much a lot of time may be needed. So if you see, we typically start one of these lessons with a whole class activity. And typically that first lesson is not even in Minecraft. Like for this lesson, it's really a photo analysis uh, document. So these are some different pictures that we have. And we have students just analyze this. We have a great appropriate photo analysis document over here in the resources uh, for young students and for older students. And then we have teacher resources videos that can give background knowledge for that for the students and then we go into minecraft so you can break this out tease this out however it fits into your i guess your time your lesson plan time but you definitely over a course maybe of uh, two days i can't see you completing this in a day because it was just so much content there's a month of content. <laughs> there is a lot of content. And we put way more content than, than what's needed because we wanted to make sure that you had anything that you needed and what was of most interest to you and your students. So that's why we did that. It wasn't meant for you to do everything because that would never happen. So right. just pick one or two things. Good, Allison had a good thought about kind of the connection afterwards for students to use their voice to be change makers afterwards. How have you seen that? 
happen when they take by making their art or kind of with these feelings they might have after going through the world and the lesson, what's the best way to connect that to action for them at home? So we've had a lot of the lessons actually have external um, external activities, for example, like maybe creating um, graffiti, I call it graffiti art, but like the street art, like in Adobe Spark or creating it in Buncee or using Flipgrid for a reflection activity. So really taking what they're learning and applying it to what's going on in their communities in present day. And so they're able to share those um, with their, you know, their teachers and their communities and um, even on social media, if that's a possibility as well. So um, one thing I did want to say too, is that if a teacher is um, not as comfortable with Minecraft or if for example, you don't have access to Minecraft, which we hope you do. But if you don't, there are in the lesson plans, there are tons of resources that you are would still still be able to engage your students with this content um, because we've given you the teacher resources. We've given you a ton of external resources as well. So it's a it's a really well full rounded lesson. Um, Minecraft is a piece of the lesson. So there's tons and tons of content in there that make it really well rounded. Right, and we also ask questions at the end, say for instance, whatever's going on in that lesson, how have students been able to stand up for a, like a classmate or someone that wasn't treated right, so that to kind of bring it home to them, because sometimes they may not connect to the external or the bigger picture, but they can connect when a friend may have been mistreated or they had to stand up for a friend. So we try to make sure that they get their feelings out. Mm -hmm. Um, the Dr. King lesson, which was one of the um, lessons that was also released for Black History Month, you won't find that world in this particular world. It's in what we call a museum world. I love how Felice is going through this. I just love to watch people play. So I'm going to watch her play while I'm talking. Oh, no, no, no. You keep talking. I'm going to get back to <laughs> No, you're fine. Keep going. Keep going. Um, so the Dr. King lesson um, is in what we call them in the museum world. And in that particular lesson, what we're having oh, students do is explore the different identities of Dr. Martin Luther King. So a lot of people just consider him to be the civil rights activist, but he had so many different layers to him. He was a father and a preacher and um, a husband and you know so many other layers that he had to him. And so students will do research on him. We've given tons of resources to continue that research. And then they will build a museum around the different identities that made him um, who he was. And so that's a cool activity that's there for them as well. Right, and the reason we did that, because we know that all students know about Dr. King, the civil rights activist, but we wanted them to know, just like doc, with Dr. King, there were so many different parts to Dr. King. There are so many different parts to everyone. There are layers and different identities. And so one thing I want you to see, I don't know if um, you guys saw the newspaper article when Congressman Lewis, or the picture of him standing on Black Lives Matter Plaza, looking out over Black Lives Matter Plaza. That was one thing that we just absolutely knew had to be there because it was so dynamic and just, you know, just the picture said so many things that were unsaid. And it's like Congressman Lewis was giving his or passing the torch to the younger generation. So we wanted to make sure that that was included in this world. Okay, come on. Am I, uh oh, <laughs> I, it would freeze. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's coming, it's coming. So that's in there and it, we have the side by side pictures. So that was just, that brought tears to our eyes. I'm gonna be honest, we, there were a lot of days that we actually cried as Steven and the other engineers were showing us the world based on what we wanted to see in there and we would come back the following week and it would be in there. So it was just amazing. And that was one of the ones that brought tears to our eyes when we saw the Black Lives Matter Plaza with Congressman Lewis looking out over the plaza. The engineers are absolutely amazing. I don't understand how they created what they did. So what are your thoughts, guys? Why well, I know this is taking me a minute. Any questions, any thoughts on how you can implement this with your students? I personally cannot wait to share this with my class as an opportunity to show the creativity. Um, I, I honestly am speechless with how amazing this is and I am coming from Canada um, where we know we have a lot of learning to do and unlearning to do. But the fact that this is your passion project, I think gives even more strength to this and where students are going to be able to 
hopefully put your passion through their voices and express their learning and then share that with their families and friends and communities. Um, the ideas are boundless in terms of filming their voices, sharing their learning, uh, creating QR codes with images that they've found of the learning in the school and spreading spreading the knowledge. Um, so thank you so, so much to the entire crew and to you two ladies for making this uh, dream come a reality. Thank you, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. They, they did, they did a lot. <laughs> All I'm right. Speechless. Thank you. <laughs> please, if your students create stuff, please like send it to us, tag us. We would love to see what they create. Most definitely. And we're in the process of creating a, a Good Trouble Wakelet so that you could hopefully be able to leave like pictures of your students in that wakelet so that we could just document that because we just want to see all of the great things that um, your students are doing. So this are the final thoughts on good trouble. And we're going to go to the plaza and hopefully it will let it will let me get there. Perfect. I'm here. <laughs> all right. So oh Allison, that's a good idea. She asks is there a hashtag we could use to make things show up together? We've been oh, using we've good been trouble used, and, and that, but that trouble. filters everything for John, like John Lewis, that was his hashtag. So that goes like th that definitely would filter all his stuff as well. So I don't know, maybe Minecraft hashtag Minecraft good trouble. We're coming with something so that we can put it all together. And yeah. so this right here is the end of the, the Black Lives Matter, the good trouble and for Congressman Lewis, like the last public venue where he was and so this was in July of 2020 where he visited Black Lives Matter Plaza in DC and then he published his essay to the Washington Post and we've linked all of that out there with the video and all of this information and so we thought it was just so profound to have him stand in the middle of Black Lives Plaza by himself like he did in the video and just be able to look back at everyone and they put it in here and yeah. then at the Capitol steps when he was looking out. All of this is in here. <laughs> so once again, another tearjerker moment for us. <laughs> we cried a lot. And so then this is a challenge and I want to just show you. Uh, let's see. Let's minimize this. Thought I had it up. So some of the videos that you will see, I tried to pull up some of these videos and I don't even think I did the sound, but this is Morgan Freeman reading. This is our link that's already in the Good Trouble world. This is the link on the NPC of Morgan Freeman reading Congressman Lewis at a last editorial in the um, Washington Post. And then this is, and I, I don't even think I shared the sound, but this is him giving his a commencement speech at Emory telling the students that they needed to get into good trouble. Yeah, there's no sound. Right. Oh, I think you need to reshare with the sound um, button on. Happens to us every day. I know. <laughs> I think it should just be auto sound on. I feel like. Yeah, that's, <laughs> what, that's exactly what we need, the auto sound on. Let me, here we go. Oh, this is so great. I can't wait to hear it. It is amazing. I met Rosa Parr at the age of 17. In 1958, at the age of 18, I met Martin Luther King Jr. And these two individuals inspired me to get in the way, to get in trouble. So I come here to say to you this morning, on this beautiful campus with your great education, you must find a way to get in the way. You must find a way to get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. As young people, you must understand that there are forces that want to take us back to another period. All right, so we thought that that definitely had to be in there. <laughs> and because it's all about good trouble and him just wanting students, letting them know that it was okay to stand up for the rights of others and to get into trouble. And so that's why we included all of that information in here. And I think that is pretty much it. Um, questions, thoughts, comments. I'm going to tell you, it was kind of, you know, when you put 
things out there. You don't know how it's going to be received. So we had some trepidation also, but we are really proud of this work because we hope that it, we know that it's going to touch the students that it was meant to touch and to make a difference where it was meant to make a difference. So that just means a lot to us. And we hope that. Christina in the chat said feedback from the 11 year old beside her said the bridge is the best. <laughs> So Christina, I would love for you to show, I'm assuming it's a him, a picture. He also enjoys India Mandela and the dog. Show him a picture, pull up a picture of Edmund Pettus Bridge in real life and show it side by side so he can see it in real life too. Oh, you guys are awesome. Please reach out if there's- If y'all want, if everybody wants to come off mute and camera really quick and just give some snaps and claps for this wonderful world and lesson. I'm so inspired. I don't know about y'all, but I got chills and- Teary eyes, like Woo! powerful, everybody. That's so awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I say, oh, this means so much, guys. You're gonna make me cry again because I when you you're doing funny. something from your heart, you know, you just put it out there and put yourself out there. It just means so much. You just added an extra idea, though, that brings in the idea of bringing in the photography of the world now as it is in the historical context and comparing it to the reality of the Minecraft world, yeah. which I think brings a whole other experience to the Absolutely. importance of what you've created. So thank you, Natasha, for putting that in. Cause that didn't even cross my mind because I'm so like hooked into all of this awesome learning. <laughs> but the yeah, so thank you. Such a, there's so many learning opportunities, so, so many. many learning opportunities. And we wanted to make sure that we try to touch the globe so that all students and just people would know that there have been people around the world just standing up for others and getting into good trouble. And it didn't just start now. It's been going on since the beginning of time, whether it was women standing up for women. Yeah, we go all the way back to the 1800s in England to Emmeline Pankhurst. We didn't even mention that. Right, so, and we have Malala in here standing up for girls' education, Gandhi in India, and we don't we don't stray away from some of the controversial pieces too, because you know there we address that in the FAQs, like for Gandhi and um, for the Black Lives Matter movement, we address all of that and uh, who was present and which groups were represented and not in the um, women's suffragette movement in Britain. So we talk about all of that as well. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank and you, everyone. Look at the babies. Thank you, babies. No, well, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us, not babies, little young men. And <laughs> yes. Thank you all. Don't forget to follow um, Felisa and Natasha online. Please tag your artwork with them. Hashtag Minecraft EDU. We'd love next couple of weeks if you teach with this lesson um uh, any of the insights that you had and the stuff that your students create so thank you again both what a wonderful world and i'm so excited to have you share it with our community have a great night and day everybody thanks for coming thank you thank bye you. bye